Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. John, Colvin and I have the pleasure of once again speaking to Manny Pacheco. Not a, once again. Once again. What The once again pleasure. Manny, good to see you. Are, are you through? No. <laughs> I'm trying to get. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying. I'm trying to build you up here, Manny. Hey, Manny. It is award season. Mm. Yes. Now, uh, I know you are a member of SAG, so SAG after us. So you get to vote for the Actors Awards. You don't necessarily get to vote for, let's say, Best Picture, Best Cinematographer, Best Director. No. But I know you have an opinion because you see almost all the movies. Yes. And um, you have an opinion on all this. So let's talk. Awards, specifically SAG awards, because that's your where you get to vote. You actually have some influence there. And then let's in in while we do that, let's talk about best picture, best director, things like that. Sure, 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 absolutely. And you know, I don't know how much influence I have. I'm one of I don't know tens of thousands of SAG members, so I have uh, you know uh, just a smat a smattering of of influence. Okay, Matt, Matt, stop being humble. What are your ideas? (laughs) Who's going to win? Yeah. So what's well, it, do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite picture? Favorite cast? Yeah, let me but let me first start by saying that every year I vote, and I've been doing that ever since I've been a member. And then I do something that a lot of folks don't. And you and I've had this argument before, uh, John. I actually post my my ballot on uh, on uh, my blog at forgottenhollywood.com. One of yeah. the uh, one of the things that we do vote for in the SAG Awards, which is different from the Oscars, is we concentrate on the cast members. So we do look at the outstanding cast in a motion picture and in television, but today we're going to just focus on, on the motion pictures. And the, the five nominees this year were Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, House of Gucci, and King Richard. Uh, I think it's a solid five. I, there are another five that I might have considered because I thought they had great casts. The biggest snub of that group was The Power of the Dog, which is uh, really the critics' fave to win the Oscar for Best Picture of the Year. It did not make our outstanding performance of a cast. I particularly enjoyed Nightmare Alley's cast. I thought it was a tremendous cast, and I'll get into the particulars in a little bit. Licorice Pizza had a real wonderful young cast, as did West Side Story. And a little talked about film, The French Dispatch, really particularly p- pleased me. Wes Anderson has his favorites that he uses, and they really work well with Anderson. Um, Francis McDormand and yes. um, uh, 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 Bill Murray and Tilda Swinton and the like. But of the five that are nominated, my particular choice as it stands now, it could change, but I, I, I believe Belfast is my favorite, and I think that's the way I'm going to go. But that said... Don't Look Up is getting a lot of buzz, controversial buzz, but it could win the the best outstanding performance by a cast. I'm good with it. They had a great cast. I mean, we're talking Meryl Streep and Jennifer Lawrence and Leo DiCaprio. It's just a tremendous film. But Belfast, with a lot of unknown actors and Judi Dench, I think delivers one of the most poignant, uh, well-told performances in the style of, uh, if you remember Roma, it's that kind of style of motion picture. And it's beautifully uh, photographed. And uh, the direction is just wonderful by Kenneth Branagh. So Kenneth, yep. <laughs> Kenneth Branagh. Kenneth Branagh kind of relives the Belfast of his youth. Of his youth, yes. And, and it's the it's the beginning of the what the Irish called the Troubles. Yes. Uh, the Irish yes. Revolution. That's right. Uh, a twentieth century revolution, and it the female lead is Katrona, uh, Katrina, I think they say, Balfi. Yes. Who um, was the star of the? I can't think of the name of the TV show TV series on. Uh, HBO. It, it was a um, Scottish. She goes back in time as a Scottish mm-hmm. uh, English woman to Sc- Scotland. Anyway, she in Belfast. She is terrific. Yes, yeah. and, and so I chose Belfast as my my outstanding performance by a cast. But if you're going to talk about Katrina Belfast, she's up against in for for supporting. Believe it or not, they consider that the only a uh, true lead in the film is is the child. Everybody else is in support, which probably is correct. 
But uh, Katrina Belfe is up against Kate Blanchett in Nightmare Alley, Ariana DeBose in A West Side Story, Kirsten yep. Dunst in The Power of the Dog, and Ruth Nega in Passing. A really fine collection. Um, I really have very little argument in that group. Yeah. I'm leaning towards Ariana DeBose of West Side Story, although I absolutely adored Kate Blanchett in the in the film noir elements of Nightmare Alley and Katrina Belfe in Belfast. So I think it's a very strong group. Now, who got snubbed? Folks will tell you that Rita Moreno got snubbed for West Side Story. She had already won an Academy Award for the 1961 right. presentation of West Side Story. I'm not sure that her performance would have merit uh, a nomination. She still could grab an Oscar nomination. But um, for me, Anjanou Ellis in King Richard would have been the person I voted for. She was absolutely terrific as the mother of Venus and Serena Williams in King Richard. She got snubbed. So I'm going to fall back to either Ariana DeBose, Kate Blanchett, or Katrina Belfe. Also, Nina Arianda was really terrific as Ethel Mertz in being the Ricardos. Yeah. I have a quick question uh, for you, you uh, Manny. Uh, I, like mm -hmm. uh, much of our audience, uh, haven't been to a movie theater in the better part of two years. And uh, right. uh, I, I don't know when I'm going back, but that's not really what the question is. But because of the theaters generally being empty, has that, do you think, uh, uh, affected who even got nominated in the first place? Yes. So oh, oh, and there's one glaring example. I believe that the release of West Side Story opposite Spider-Man had a really detrimental effect on a really terrific movie. But, you know, the public yeah. wanted a Spider-Man movie, and this one happens to be very good. And so guess guess what got left in the dust? West Side Story. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really a shame. It's just poor release timing. And you're right. Folks uh, went to the movie theaters to go see Spider-Man. And uh, West Side Story is probably going to be a big, uh, uh, you know, a screener once it's on television. And, yeah. and then people will see how really fabulous it is. It's a wonderful... <laughs> I, you know, when we're side... We can talk about West Side Story in another video, but... It, because it deserves uh, its own discussion. Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised by West Side Story, how good it was and how yeah. well they took the story and updated it for a new generation. Well, they and also that, they fleshed and, it out, too. Yeah, and the girl who starred in it yes. absolutely deserves an Oscar. Rachel Zegler. Well, let, well, we're staying with the women. The outstanding performances for female actor, the, the lead, Jessica Chastain, Tammy Faye Baker, you know, in the eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Colman, Lost Daughter, Lady Gaga for House of Gucci, Jennifer Hudson for Respect, playing Aretha Franklin and Nicole Kidman for being the yep. Ricardos. Yep. Um, you know, Rachel Zegler just won herself a Golden Globe. She could have been in that list, but the really glaring omission here, because uh, she was considered the favorite to win an Oscar, is Kristen Stewart. For Spencer playing, uh, uh, you know, mm. uh, Princess Di, yeah. not even a nomination. Yeah. Uh, you know, I love Jennifer Hudson and Aretha Fra as Aretha Franklin in respect, but for my money, Cynthia Erivo did a better job on television. Uh, Lady Gaga is fine. Olivia Colman's always good. Just a I love. I have to. I have to jump in and say I loved Lady Gaga. Yeah. I, I never knew she could act until you know A Star Is Born. Right. right. But I thought she was. Perfect for House as, of Gucci. Uh, yeah. As the Gucci woman, you know, the Gucci yeah. sister. Just but I think, but, but for my money, I'm going with Nicole Kidman at this point. I, mm. I think she just really, really captures yeah. I, I happened to see that one, and, and I was a huge, uh, as many of us uh, in the audience and uh, the three of us, uh, Lucy fans growing up uh, on yeah. television. Absolutely. And I think she captured her. Uh, she, the fact that she didn't look exactly like her didn't detract her because she yeah. played she played Lucy. She was Lucy. Yeah. She inhabited her. I'm with you. Yeah, I think I think she really embodied the the all the elements of Lucille Ball. Some yeah. of the uh, some of the snubs include uh, as well as Kristen Stewart and Rachel Ziegler, uh Frances McDormand for Tragedy of Macbeth, mm. Penelope Cruz for Parallel Women, and right. Alana Haim for Licorice Pizza. She did a real nice job. She, you know what, that that film, I was so surprised at how good it was. Um, she, and she, she's a newcomer, if I'm not mistaken. She's a newcomer. And she, and was, she had her whole family in the picture. Uh, her whole family. <laughs> you know, but it was fun. Was she, she, good. she had a fun role. I loved it.
she was so good. It's a wonderful little film. It's a, I call it a little film. It's a like a homemade film, you know. A, a and that's uh, Paul film. Thomas Anderson, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Now, if we're going to talk about Licorice Pizza, it did get one nomination in the male actor in the supporting role, Bradley Cooper. That was a shock to me. I didn't think that he deserved it. Not because he can't act, because I love Bradley Cooper, but I thought the part was really small. It's a it's a five minute role to walk yeah. on. Yeah. But he's up against Ben Affleck, always charming, and this time in the tender bar. Troy Kotzer in Coda, Jared Leto, who I, is unrecognizable in House of Gucci and just so wonderful. And the odds and the odds on favor to win is Cody Smith McPhee in The Power of the Dog. But for my money, I'm going with Jared Leto. I thought, wow, he was a Gucci and he was the yeah. sad Gucci. Oh my gosh, he was just terrific. Cody's he gonna was. win. Cody's gonna win. I'm voting for Jared. Now, I I'll tell you who was really snubbed. I I I mean, literally the entire male cast. Of, of Belfast, Chiron Hines, uh, Colin Morgan, they were terrific. I would have voted for Chiron Hines if they, had he been nominated as yeah. the father, up married to Judy Dench, he was terrific. Yeah. J.K. Simmons, real good as Fred Mertz in being the Ricardos, and yeah. a pair of actors that are always good, Willem Dafoe and David Strathern, both in Nightmare Alley, and both absolutely terrific. Yes, and and, uh, with uh, Strathern and Defoe, they didn't do their usual thing. That's what I look for an actor. You, you've seen these guys in so many roles; they almost have the same mannerisms, no matter what right. the character is. Right. These were different. These guys really stepped out of their mannerisms, out of their habits, right. and really did some fine acting. So, and they that, were part in the, of in that they were part of an ensemble that easily could have been nominated for the for the for the cast because you, I mean you, you add Tony Collette to that group yeah and yeah. of course the nominated Kate Blanchett I mean it's just a I mean just a terrific film it's hard well, to you, watch you love Manny you love uh, film noir anyway yes and Nightmare Alley is it happens to be based on a 1947 film with Tyrone Power yes so yeah uh, yeah, yeah and it's a wonderful update it's a wonderful update. So and so the final the final category, and this is going to make you happy, Art. This is going to make you excitingly happy. Uh, mm. uh, outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role, Javier Bardem, for being the Ricardos, and Benedict Cumberbatch for The Power of the Dog. But here you go, Art, for you. Andrew Garfield, tick, tick, boom. Yeah. Will Smith, uh, King Richard, and Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth. I agree with Art. I'm I'm tending to go towards voting for Andrew Garfield. I think that his performance was really groundbreaking. It was fun. It was it, loads of talent, singing, acting, yes. energetic. Yes. He was all over the place. He bounced like a pinball and he never missed and a you, beat. And you, I love and, you, it. Boom. and for those of us who, who, who enjoyed Lars, who a big fan of Rent, and this is sort of like pre-Rent, uh, this is uh, uh, his uh, out-of-town trials that never quite made it terrific piece. You thought he was Jonathan Larson. I mean, you forgot yes. you forgot who he was. So. Absolutely. Now, we both love him, but that said, Will Smith is going to win for King Richard. <laughs> He's my second choice right. anyway. Well, he was terrific as the father of Venus and Serena Williams. Just terrific. I look forward to seeing that in the, the next day or so. And uh, I, like most of the audience, unlike you uh, lucky sluggers out there that get all the screeners because you're you're important yeah. people uh, that, that this is a year that most of the films uh, and most of the stars have not will not have been seen by the general public so uh, as was last year uh, as well to some extent so it'll be well, interesting have... it'll be interesting to see how many uh, whether whether it'll drag anybody into the movies to see them again on a big screen or everybody's going to wait to see it on a small screen well let me just say that i i don't 100% agree with you on that because a lot of these films appear on Netflix on Power yeah. of the Dog, uh, sure. Passing, 
Um, I mean, The Lost Daughter, they're all on Netflix. The Tender Bar and Being the Ricardos are on Amazon Prime. So, I mean, there's a lot of folks and, and everybody's watching Don't Look Up. That's gotten so much buzz on the on the social media side. So I don't know about that. I think people are seeing a, a lot of these these movies. And by the way, some of the stuff snubs in the male category, Bradley Cooper was terrific in Nightmare Alley. Leo DiCaprio, I mean, what can, what can you say? A totally different role. You were talking about, John, how you can play a different part. I don't think Leonardo DiCaprio has played such a funny, goofy, uh, schizophrenic part as he did in Don't Look Up. He was terrific. I, Peter I Dink agree. But I Peter agree. Dink I had to look twice. I yeah, had to look twice to see if it was really him. And Peter Dinklage got snubbed big time. I think I would have replaced uh, Javier Bardem because I thought he was just too old for Desi Arnaz. But I think Peter Dinklage and Cyrano really, really got snubbed. Yeah. And how about the, the son of, of Philip Seymour Hoffman? Cooper Hoffman in Licorice Pizza. So, I mean... Oh, really? That was his son? That was his son, yeah. Oh. Just as talented as his father, it looks Very like. good. He's, so, yeah. So, Manny, I know, I, I know that uh, year to year, you're always posting the uh, Oscar, your Oscar picks. Do you do the same thing for SAG? I don't remember. No, no, I do it for SAG. I don't do them for the Oscars. Oh, okay. But, 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 but John did ask uh, what I thought as far as direction goes and, uh, and mm -hmm. writing. You know, the, the writing, I, I, I'll tell you right now, for my money, the, 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 the movie that's going to get royally snubbed in, in direction and writing and pr maybe not, maybe production design, maybe not score, is The French Dispatch. Uh, a three is told in three parts. Like I said, it has the usual suspects, and each mini story is just beautifully t told. And the production design in all three, the only word that I can come up with is pristine. It's a beautiful film. If you like, um, uh, what was the name of that movie? Um, the Grand Budapest Hotel. If you yeah. like the Grand Budapest Hotel, you will love the French Dispatch. I think it's even a better movie than the Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, yeah, so. it, it. you know, the, part of the problem is that that director, it, it remind me of his name? Uh, Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson. That director has a unique style. Yes, he does. And it's almost like the old fashioned tableau style, you know, people yes. are frozen and they tell us a story. And it's, it, you know, if you don't appreciate that style. I know. I agree. It, no, I agree with you. I, after watching the movie with my friend, I had watched it with a high school friend of mine. I commented, you and I love this movie. It's going to be ignored by the rest of the world. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here's, a, here's the most important question of all. Most important question of all. Now that you've given the review, when are the SAG Awards supposed to take place? Uh, at the end of February. I don't have the exact date with me, and they usually air on TNT or TBS, but it's it's at the end of February. Well, uh, right around the time, uh, probably the week after they, they, they post the Oscar nominations. Now, the, the question you should ask me is, who do you think is going to win the Best Picture Award? Yeah, I, John and I are going to push real hard for Belfast. I already know that, but it's probably going to be the power of the dog. Really? Yeah. Right now, it's You know, that was a good favorite. movie, but I didn't think it was a great movie. I thought it was a good movie. I didn't think it was a great movie. Does that sound like an echo? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you so, just said the same thing I, I would have said. So, yes, so, absolutely. Uh, this, this is like a public service announcement that we're giving to our audience who have been shut-ins and may not have even paid much attention to net, the Netflix uh, things that come in your email. Oh, it's another thing. You're trying to get more money out of me. Whatever it happens to be, you just go past that. Yeah. So unless you happen to have a spouse or friends that say, it's on Netflix, go see it. I'm going to guarantee you that many people in our audience haven't seen any of these films. Okay, but a lot, yeah, of, them are, a lot of them are available. And Probably now not. that yeah. you have gotten a taste of what the master, okay, thinks about these and the few that were snubbed, you've got about three or four weeks to go catch up so that you can make up your own mind before they're formally Absolutely. announced. Yeah. Well, Manny, I, I think Manny, he's right, except for go, Don't Look Up. I think people, yeah. a lot of people, it was, the num it was the number one movie watched on Netflix was Don't Look Up. So that's the one exception. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Before we go, I want to mention, I want to give honorable mention uh, to Benedict Cumberbatch. I just, just the other night, I went to see Spider-Man, whatever it is, 17. 
<laughs> yeah, the po- the power of the spider. I don't Thank know. Thank you. Where where he plays <laughs> Doctor Strange. And of course he's in the power of the dog. Yes. And we've seen him in lots of things. And I, he, he always amazes me that he can be, first of all, so American with his accent when he wants mm-hmm. to be. Mm-hmm. But it also amazes me that he can be such different characters. He's really, really a fine, fine actor. Versatile, and people are saying that uh, this is his defining role in The Power of the Dog. And that said, that might be just good enough for a second or third place. So, <laughs> I mean, which, we'll never, which we'll never know. Yeah, yeah. We'll, and we'll never know. Right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, this has been fun. And um, we'll get together again and talk about more awards somewhere down in the future, maybe after the Academy Awards. We can pick and choose and tell them why they were wrong on certain movies. Well, I can't say one thing. Let me close on this. The Academy Awards this year is going back to a host. So they're going to have a host this year. So that could make it more fun. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Manny, thanks so much. We'll see you soon. We'll see you at the awards ceremony. Okay. (laughs) On the red carpet. We'll be looking for you, Manny. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.